If you're seeking to boost your clarity in any decision you have been wanting to make or any situation that you're going through and you keep asking yourself, is this the right decision for me? Is this the right approach for me? Even is this the right path for me? I want you to go right now to my show notes because I have prepared a free and simple three questions framework for you to go through that by answering these questions, I promise you'll feel a lot more clearer and you'll start creating fulfilling outcomes out of the decisions you're making. Just go right now or you can go to ybcoaching.com slash clarity. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to the With Clarity and Purpose podcast with your host, Janet Borrego. Each week, I bring you an inspiring person or message to empower you to live life on your terms so you can be who you want to be, do what you are meant to do, and have the life you deserve to have. We will provide you with practical and cutting edge approaches to continue getting clarity and direction on your path, mastering your mindset, and gaining confidence to tap into your inner wisdom so you can live on purpose. Welcome to the With Clarity and Purpose podcast. And I am so excited today because I bring you a very special and inspiring guest, Ina Mitev. Ina is on a mission to help you awaken the healer within and tap into your infinite cosmic power. She's a mind body expert, quantum life coach, and manifestation teacher. Ina, welcome to With Clarity and Purpose. How are you doing? Hi. I'm so good. I'm so excited. This is going to be such a juicy conversation. I can't wait to see where it goes. <laughs> can't wait. And just some background so people know how we connected. So Ina and I met in one of the spiritual development trainings I was doing in Hawaii a few weeks back, a few months back. Time flies by. I'm like, I don't yeah. know when that happened. <laughs> but yeah, we immediately connected and we are so passionate about similar things. So after I knew her story, I knew I had to bring her to the podcast. So I just wanted to provide a quick background there. <laughs> yes, yes. Awesome. Ina, so tell us about you. Where were you born? Where are you from? What's your background? All right. So I was born actually in Bulgaria and my family immigrated to the U.S. when I was five. Um, so I've lived in Washington State basically my whole life. And um yeah, so my journey kind of started, you know, in my 20s and that, you know, how we go through self-discovery and just finding our path and breaking free of who we thought we were going to be as mm -hmm. originally. Exactly. I went through the same. It's funny that you said 20s because when my actually discovery started was in, I, I was 23 too, when I realized mm, yeah. chemical engineering is definitely not for me. But since yeah. a child, I just knew. I don't know if the same thing happened to you. Yeah, I would say, you know, I was thinking, I've been preparing for this podcast and kind of thinking back on the story. And I remember in, I think it was ninth or 10th grade, I had my first psychology class. And I just remember this like light bulb going off and I loved every second of it. And I had decided then, okay, I'm going to go to to university and I'm going to study psychology and I'm going to do business. And then somehow that fell apart. Like when I got to college, I yeah. just was like, I'm not going to do psychology. And that's really when that light started to dim. And I really feel like I lost the path, right? That vision kind of started disappearing. I love and that. And then, so yeah, I got into my twenties and I just, I was, I just felt very lost. And, um, it wasn't until my late twenties actually that I kind of realigned. It's like the train tracks kind of came back into alignment um, I found myself at an NLP training and I felt that same like excitement, that same knowing, uh, just like a deep knowing within that. Oh yeah, this is it. <laughs> I love, what did you end up studying in college? Business, uh, marketing, or actually I was going to do finance at first. And then I went to an interview and it was like that scene from the matrix where you find yourself in the long conference room and you're yeah. just like, this cannot be my life. <laughs> 
home. They're like, this is not it. <laughs> this isn't it. So then I changed my my major to marketing, but that wasn't it either. And I just was very lost in, in that time of my life. Yeah. So you finished your degree and then you started working, right? And that's when yeah. it started hitting you. That's when the light came up, like a light bulb and started coming up again, right? Yeah. Well, I started working. I was in marketing. Things were going well. Mid twenties, I kind of got into manifestation, you know, yeah, and yeah. intentionally manifesting. So life was awesome. Felt like a rock star. Um, and then that mid twenties, I also really started focusing on health and wellness just through my own journey of health and wellness, body image. Um, I also, you know, feeling like a rock star manifesting my dreams. And then I got hit with kind of a diagnosis from left field and was told, you know, at the time it was incurable. And there was a knowing in me that like, no, that that's not the, that's not the answer. That's not right. That's what really led me back onto my journey was this knowing that there's something else, like there's something else um, within me that can overcome this or that I need to discover. So, um, you know, for me, it started very much physical, like uh, nutrition and fitness. And then I got led to NLP. So then I learned about how the mental body and our beliefs affect, you know, our actual physical body. And then I, it went a step further. I went into master practitioner and that was really about the emotions and how the emotions affect the mental and, you know, and, and then eventually led me to Huna where I really started to understand that frequency precedes form. And so yeah. it's, it's that top down approach. And so all those layers just kind of clicked into place over time. Um, and it was, it was a long journey, but it's totally worth it. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And for those that don't know, NLP is what we have been certified on is neurolinguistic programming is basically the assumption that our mind is a mega computer and NLP is the code that you put into that computer in order to align yourself so you can accomplish what you want to accomplish so you can get your desired outcome. So it's just reprogramming your mind with all these amazing techniques and skills and it's highly focused on the mental and emotional aspects. And then HUNA, which Ina also mentioned, that was a spiritual development training we took in Hawaii that I was just talking about. Yes. So I love it. So physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, it makes total sense. Yeah. When you got that diagnosis, I mean, how did you respond to it? How did you know not to trust that and actually start finding your own path? It was just a deep it was just, it's hard to explain, right? It's yeah. just a voice, like a very faint voice. There's no panic behind it. There's no like, you know, this is, um, I say a lot to clients, like you can get a diagnosis, but that's not your prognosis. Like you yeah. decide your prognosis and yeah, just a, a really deep knowing like, no, <laughs> I'm, yeah, not, I'm not going to accept a, this. Right? I have a different path. Yeah. yeah. There's something else for me here. I know different better learning. So you got that diagnosis, it was on the physical aspect, and in the background, you were still doing the career that you have studied for, right? Yes. That's right. Yes. Okay. So then I'm on this like personal growth journey, right? And yeah. trying to heal myself. So it's that kind of wounded healer, right? I had, yeah. I had to go through the hero's journey myself. So as I'm finding these, I, around my Saturn return, which happens like around 29, 30, you know, we have this big shakeout in our life. Um, that's when I ended up at these trainings for the mental emotional aspect. And there I had that same, like that same, um, gut feeling like this is it, right. It just, it felt like the train tracks realigned and that inner passion kind of reignited. And I knew at that point, it was like, you're supposed to shift careers. Like, this is it, you know, <laughs> what are you doing? But I didn't. And so that's kind of the interesting part of the story when I was thinking about it is that even though I had that really strong gut feeling, I still had work to do on self-worth, on self-esteem, and I stayed, like I stayed in my marketing career, uh, but it that internal conflict started getting louder and louder. And louder yeah, right? Like every I time I was <laughs> working on a project, there's this voice in the back of my mind that's like, this isn't your purpose. Like, this isn't what you're meant to do. You're not you're not sharing your gift with the world. And so that got louder and louder. I still didn't listen. And so again, it's funny, there's this meme on Instagram and this guy is like 
face down on the ground and there's a post on him that's like telling him something and he's like but this is a post like I need a signier sign come on you know <laughs> I know it's like the signs are there we just don't listen right exactly but they get louder and louder just like when your body's giving you a sign and we don't listen and it gets louder and louder and louder that that started happening so eventually what happened is that the project started drying up like the um you know my needs weren't being met at work in a sense And so it was kind of like the universe had to push me out of the nest, you know, like there was no other option. (laughs) And honestly, it wasn't until this year, actually, that that happened. And uh, so I I transitioned from that career in marketing and, and now pursuing this full time. And again, I'm starting to feel that passion, excitement, that creativity is starting to flow. Um, but I've had to work through even in the in the last couple of weeks, like I'm still like peeling back layers um, of visibility of, you know, just being able to come out and use my voice. I love that. And to be honest, the entrepreneurship journey is so different than working for someone. You know, you really have to tap into that self-worth to be able to show up every day and in a way show up for yourself because in this case just like you are my brand is me right so it's like working through this self-worth and confidence every single day (laughs) yeah yeah and you know self-worth and self-esteem is so critical even from mana from a manifestation process because even if it's right in front of you you won't be able to see it, right? You there'll be these filters yeah. of if there's a hundred dollar bill sitting right in front of you, you might you might not even register it. Um, and so I think that a lot of times we we're asking for things, um, but what's coming back to us is those lessons first. And once we master that, then our ability to manifest just like quantum leaps from there. Yeah. I love that. And like we, we, I always remind my clients and you know, these the four requisites for change, right? Mm-hmm. Like release anything that no longer serves you, negative emotions, all the baggage, create your compelling future, your intention, right? Where do you want to move towards or forward to take action? And the fourth one, I think is very related to what you said, focus on what you want, like literally, because for example, I have this example of finding your keys. Have you been have you been in a situation where you're trying to find your keys and you're late to go somewhere and you cannot yes. find them? <laughs> yes. And then yes. you're like, oh my God, I cannot find them. I cannot find them. I cannot find them. And just to realize that they were in front of you the whole time. So your mind was following your directive to not find them by deleting the information that was in front of you, right? So I think exactly what you said, like focusing on what you want, working on yourself and while going through the challenging challenges, always keeping track of that vision that you have of where you want to head towards. So I love what you said. Yeah. You know, and, and, and about vision, like I actually had a really hard time creating that vision. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I had a hard time putting myself even five years into the future. Like, what do I want? And, and it really had to come down to just following the passion or following that curiosity and just trusting that if I follow that and just just take one step eventually it will open up and so and I got down myself a lot because I was like why can't why can't I vision you know I can vision for others like why can't I create that that in the future and so just if anybody is having an issue doing that just follow that curiosity follow that passion follow that thing that like lights you up, like when you talk to people and your eyes like start to sparkle, you know, that thing that will lead you to the next step. I I think that's amazing. And one of the things that I remind myself and I remind my clients when setting that vision is allow yourself the permission to dream, you know, because even when setting that vision of the future, we are so focused on being realistic and being able to predict in a linear way the next step. And it is like seeing a baby when they're crawling and thinking like, oh my God, you're crawling. You'll never be able to do math. I mean, you just don't expect that things are going to go the way they go in order for them to grow even further. So we assume linear growth or flat growth many times when we're trying to set that vision. 
And you don't know the things that can happen in the path where you can suddenly like go to the freaking moon and be where you never thought you would be. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a great point. Yeah, like the quantum space doesn't operate linearly at all. Awesome. And so, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Like I was listening to one of your um, one of your lives the other day where you talked about finding the internship yeah <laughs> and you know like if you go somewhere and you try and it doesn't feel good just ask for another opportunity and pay attention to what's in front of you you know I love so. that I love that so much and I'm really passionate about, about manifestation because manifestation with action some people have this idea of like you'll manifest while sitting in your chair I mean I truly believe there has to be action right so the frequency can meet that of your desired outcome what are, I mean, we talked about the vision, which I, I think is an amazing step in the manifestation process. What else have you learned? And I want you to, you're a quantum coach. So I want you to really yeah. bring this quantum and let's even explain what quantum is because some of the listeners may not know what it is, right? So what is quantum and what are the other key steps in the manifestation process? Yeah, so the quantum space to me is just the space of infinite possibility. And that's the way I like to imagine it, you know. Um, it's what you said, there's no linear time frame in the quantum space. Yeah. Everything's available to you. And so you can just explore your imagination, and your imagination is what kind of so you have all these infinite possibilities your imagination and your awareness and your focus is basically like almost like fishing and you're pulling one in, but your focus is what reels it in. So you have to keep your focus there and then, and have the patience and faith that it will like drop into this, the physical realm manifestation. I feel like there's so, you know, there's so many tactics and techniques, but it's actually very simple. Um, I was listening to this amazing lecture by Greg Braden and he, you know, he spent, uh, many, many uh, times and like with monks and in Tibet and in um, Asia. And he basically said, he asked the monks, he was like, oh, you're doing all this stuff. You're chanting all day. You know, you're meditating. Like, what are you doing that we're not seeing? And it was so simple. He basically said, the feeling is the prayer. We're yeah. doing all of this yeah. stuff to get us into a certain feeling space. And that feeling space is that that thing has already happened. Exactly. And yeah. there's no doubt. It's just, it is. Yeah. And it, and that's how simple it is. So whatever you need to do to get you into that feeling space, to eliminate the doubt, to really help you tap into what would it feel like when that thing happens, that's the key. And so it can be chanting, it can be dancing, it can be journaling, but you don't necessarily have to write something down 50 times a day. You know, the more complicated you think it has to be, it has to be because that's your belief. Like, yeah, so I like to keep it simple. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I think what you said is unbelievable and amazing because it is true. All of these things that we are chasing all the time, right? The next promotion, my business having my YouTube video having 1 million views, getting interviewed by Oprah. I mean, all of these things, what we are after is the feeling, right? The feeling exactly. of happiness, of fulfillment. It's not about the money. It's not about the relationship. It's about how you feel, how you believe you'll feel whenever you get that. But what yeah. Ina is also saying is that the feeling is already there. It's already within you and you can tap into it. And whenever you tap into that feeling, then those things start coming naturally because you have arrived to where you wanted to go. Um, yes. So, and by the way, this is not woo-woo stuff. There is science. I mean, oh, someone science. that I love, <laughs> yeah, just to, you know, for the people not super familiar with manifestation and quantum, someone that I love, and I would love to hear what you think, Ina, someone that I love reading about is Dr. Joe Dispenza. He has many books on this topic with scientific proof of the quantum field. Even Einstein talked about the quantum. The scientists that have studied even quantum physics the most, they understand that there is this universal intelligence no one can consciously understand, but it's there. It's the energy, right? So 
it is scientific too. I just wanted to make that clear. Absolutely. Uh, science has finally caught up to exactly. what Eastern philosophy has al always known. Yep. And that's because now we have the tools that can measure the quanta, which is the quanta means small, very small particles. Yeah. Um, and so all of this is based in science, is based in research. And the smartest people are studying this, right? And, and trying to understand it. But I also... Um, I was also, the, again, this lecture from Greg Braden, what I loved is he was like, believe in the mystery again, because when we think we have everything figured out, it's kind of like, oh, okay, now I just have to regurgitate what somebody else has figured out. But if you start to think of yourself as this magnificent and mysterious being, and the sky is the limit, that brings the like kind of allure and sexiness back into it, right? You're like, what is my limit? Like, how can I tap into these other possibilities and so I really like that the, that reminder that we are still mysterious and we always will be because as long as we're searching we'll find that thing that's the observer that. effect right if we're searching for the smallest thing we'll keep finding smaller and smaller particles or quanta or quarks if we're searching for infinity I was I was watching this documentary on infinity we're searching for infinity well it's just going to keep getting bigger right because we are yeah. observing and looking for it Exactly. That's why science every year they discover something new. They discover a new planet, yeah. a new particle, right? Because we keep looking yeah. and looking. And the more you look, you realize the less you know. I mean, the less yeah. you know. <laughs> it's just a mystery. <laughs> yeah. That's that's so nice. And I was thinking, right? How I mean, how do you and I know this is not a constant kind of like feeling, but how do you tap into that feeling? Do you have a practice? Do you have anything that is basically your routine. And my second question, Ina, what do you do when you're not feeling in that space? What do you do to break that pattern? <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great question. Uh, yeah, because I mean, we're all human, right? We, we are have all figuring and downs, out. <laughs> and that's okay. I think sometimes we also have this fear of like, oh my God, if I think of this thing, it's going to happen, right? And so we start getting down on ourselves. But it's really, if you have a thought, uh, the best way to break out of it is just to say, oh, that was a silly thought. Instead of the emotion is what feeds it. And especially fear, uh, fear and love are the two things that can kind of make something happen. Yeah. That, you know, and so if you have a thought that you don't like, just be like, oh, that was a silly thought. And it kind of takes the seriousness out of it and kind of yeah. allows it to pass. I definitely have a list of th when I'm when I'm not feeling at my best or when I'm feeling kind of more low level in terms of my emotion, I have a list of things and I will literally go through each one, one by one and, and just keep doing it, knowing that eventually it will like pop me out of that space. So that, yeah. that is walking, taking a walk. Um, or if I'm feeling more angry, I, uh, more like a hit workout just to help move that emotion in my body. Um, reading, I have a couple favorite books that just just remind me, okay, you are in charge here, right? This isn't this isn't the be all end all. This too shall pass. So I'll read something inspiring. I'll watch somebody that inspires me, like you said, Joe Dispenza, Greg Braden. There's so many teachers and people that I love and respect that will help me through that. Um, coloring, painting, like then I get more, you know, into that creative space. Journaling music like I have music that would just like it just helps me dance it helps me relax and again moving that body because emotions um it's all neuropeptides that get released in the brain and then if we if we don't allow those to move they will get kind of lodged into tissues organs joints and so it's really important to help move that energy yeah and I just knowing knowing it's temporary I think yeah that's and I think, I mean, everything you said, I resonate with. And I think also experimenting, you know, what works yeah. best for you, because every person may be different. And yeah. something that has worked well for me is this physical exercise and just doing some, like breaking that habit of being myself, of what I'm doing in the moment and doing something in expect, unexpected from what yes. I usually do, like breaking that linear pattern and if I'm feeling angry or sad, like taking a run, which by the way, I don't like running. And that's why I do it. <laughs> I'm going to be yeah. honest because exactly. it puts me in that mindset of like, hey, I can do hard things, you know? So I just 
I don't run long, okay? Maybe like five minutes or 10 minutes, but that still is a challenge for me. And just doing that, just I break through, break through yeah. that emotion of like being angry or sad or whatever. So uh, yeah, I think I love that. Yeah, everyone's different. So fi finding that thing that helps you is important, having fun. Yeah, that's so good. And let's go back to your decision. And I had this thought when you were saying it and I'm like, oh my God, we need to talk about this. I read a quote the other day that it was like, people make decisions, make hard and aligned decisions, one, out of desperation or crisis, <laughs> out of <laughs> desperation or out of inspiration, right? And when I look back at my career, the first step that I took out of alignment was out of crisis because I hit rock bottom. I literally ended up with a anxiety attack in emergency thinking that I was going to die. And after the day ended, the doctor was like, yeah, go home and drink a glass of wine. And I'm like, seriously, I've been waiting eight hours to be seen this <laughs> news. Like, I'm even more stressed now. No, I'm joking, but not like the yeah. first time yeah. where I realized, hey, I need to seek my fulfillment and happiness was when I hit that crisis you know when I hit rock bottom and to me that was such a lesson to not wait until that moment mm -hmm. again in order to make aligned and hard decisions I mean what did you learn from waiting until that moment even though that voice was getting louder what do you learn from waiting until that moment to make a decision that is aligned for you yeah, that's a great question. You know, in hindsight, they say hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think right. a lot of us do have to go through that crisis at yeah. least almost once, unless you are working with a coach that can help you recognize the blind yeah, spots or recognize, hey, this might be a sign, like let's pay attention. But if you don't and you're on the journey alone at first, hitting rock bottom, then you can look back and say, what were the voices that I was ignoring? What were those gut feelings that I kept pushing aside? What was my body telling me that I wasn't paying attention to? And I was trying to just, you know, cover it up so I could keep going with life the way it was. And I think, you know, we're not taught to listen to our bodies, which will start to give us signs very early on. And so I think that's the most important thing is learning what that voice sounds like for you. Um, there's this concept of like, we have three voices in our head, our intuition, our uh, excitement, and then our, our fear, you know? And so the intuition is always very, it's very, it's a quiet voice. There's no panic around it because it knows that eventually you're going to get on your path. Eventually you're going to learn the lessons you need to learn. And so recognizing the difference between the, the voice of intuition, the voice of fear, you know, the voice of um, reason and kind of learning that for yourself I think is important. I think listening to, like you said, the intuition is such a major lesson in this life. I always yeah, go I back to this experience that I had. Um, I was starting my entrepreneurial path. And as you know, entrepreneurship is like every day you wake up and you got to figure it out as you continue walking in alignment, yeah. right? So it's a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, and also can be very challenging mindset-wise yeah. and physically mm -hmm. and everything. And I think I was going through like, it was a challenging moment, or maybe it was right before doing something that I had never done before. That's usually when my emotions start like, be careful, <laughs> go back to the comfort zone. And I'm like, yeah. no, I cannot go back. I made that decision. And I remember I was crying and I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? Having those moments of like, what did I sign up for? And I'm like, I'm going to quit. And out of nowhere, it was just crazy because I was really into those emotions out of nowhere I heard this voice inside myself like keep going and I'm like what <laughs> the heck it was just this like it was so extreme you know I was into yeah. my emotions a lot and suddenly this voice of calm just keep going and I'm like okay yes I'll do that <laughs> so <laughs> intuition like she says and I had yeah. never heard it put this way like it sounds like calm, calm, centered and balanced, you know, yeah. like, have you had those experiences too of like just listening in the midst of crisis or something? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm like, as you know, as I've grown down this path, like now I know what the voice sounds like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I know that it's never going to 
put me down also it's net it's always your higher self or whatever you want to call that voice wherever that's coming from for you it's always encouraging you know and loving and unconditionally loving so if there's anything if there's another voice that's like oh you suck at this you should quit that's fear and that's yeah, exactly. limiting beliefs that's other things yeah so yeah again learning to learn the, uh, those differences even there's a there's a system called human design yeah and that's really interesting too because it teaches you that not everybody manifests the same way not everybody has you know your intuition shows up differently and so again just exploring how that is for you is really really important you know making a decision so funny so last week i'm like okay i i, I worked through this this part that was like the fear of visibility so i'm like okay i'm gonna get online i'm like i'm ready for this i'm gonna start making videos i'm gonna do all this stuff and then i had these things come up like saboteurs that had things that would have usually stopped me in my in my tracks right like i had this breakout on my face that would have like totally stopped me <laughs> previously because i'd be like i'm just gonna wait until this clears up you know then my energy I was like man I'm feeling really tired it must be like the change in the weather it must be this mentally just all this chatter but also knowing that when you make a big decision there's going to be these things that come up mentally emotionally physically and there are saboteurs they're used to keeping us in our comfort space right in our comfort zone that it's because it, it's more predictable being able to break through those and be the director and be like no, like we're safe. We're good. We're going to keep going forward. And so that was, that was a really good reminder. That's beautiful. And also recognizing that that resistance and that fear means that you're moving to the next level because yes. if not, it wouldn't be there. If not, you wouldn't be exactly. experiencing those thoughts, those feelings. Right. So I think learning to expect that fear, like I know every time I'm going to do something I've never done, I'm going to freak out the day before. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to keep going, but I'll be like, okay, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I've also taught myself, um, I've also taught myself to say yes before I can say no. If somebody ought, like, even with you, you're like, Hey, do you want to be on the podcast? That first gut, that really like small, tiny voice was like, yes. And then I could feel the tsunami of like, you know, mental chatter coming on. So I've taught myself that the moment I get that internal yes to say yes, yeah. before the fear can catch up. <laughs> that is so important. I think that's something that I'm, I'm mastering and I'm learning more of because sometimes we, even if we allow space, even if I said, okay, let me think about it. Then your conscious mind starts kicking in and you start overanalyzing yeah. every single thing, how good this is, even though it doesn't feel aligned. Also a shiny yeah. object syndrome. Like yeah. I literally made a decision a few months ago that my first gut instinct was like, no, you, you don't have time for this. There's a lot going on in your business. Like, don't do it. And then I, I told the person, hey, let me think about it. And when I thought about it, I'm like, oh my God, this would be so good visibility wise. This would be such a good thing to have in your background to say that you're in. Like the ego part just kicks in. And I ended up saying yes to realize later on that I couldn't follow through with this if I wanted to show up my 100%. So I love that yeah. you said of trusting your immediate gut feeling because I mean, that's something that we don't do enough of. And again, it's just training yourself. Yeah. It's just, uh, and if you say yes to something, there's no shame in retracting, yeah, say, right? If, if you know you can't give 100% of yourself, there's that's nothing true. wrong with saying like, too much yeah that's part that, of that like self-love and knowing your limits and also like showing up and inspiring others to do the same because many people are afraid to disappoint many people mm -hmm. are afraid to you know like go against what people may expect of you and I always tell my clients if you just worry about you and worry about showing up authentically and take care of you then everything else will take care of itself because everyone else will feel inspired to actually you know, look up to you as an example. So there's somebody said this to me and it really stuck with me, uh, that, that lesson. And, uh, it was what's good for you. Isn't bad. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. What's, not, yeah. not in like a selfish way yeah. where you're like narcissistic, but what's good for you, um, then you can overflow and then you can give to others freely. Right. But if you deplete yourself, then that's not good for others either. <laughs> yeah. 
And it is so funny, this like, and now we are getting super like deep here, but even like, for example, what you were saying, the fear of visibility, right? Hey, I want to be an entrepreneur. That's good for you and good for everyone. Hey, I want to share my message with, with the world. That's good for you and good for everyone. And there is a point that you also start worrying about you so much that you don't want to show up. Like, for example, oh my God, I have this breakout. How am I going to look? Oh my God, am I going to say the right thing? So, so that's more focused yeah. on you rather than on the original purpose of what you were doing anyways, right? So yeah. it is a balance and also balancing when to focus on self versus when to focus on serve the other people, yes. you know? Yeah, my te one of my teachers always says, when you get nervous, focus on the service. <laughs> exactly. That's it. Because yeah. you're there for the people, not for you necessarily. Yeah. I mean, you're you're there because you love it. But if you focus on serving people and getting those lessons and insights, then you are like, oh my God, I'm going to have fun with the process. I'm here to help them and guide them. And it feels just good, you know? I will say though, sometimes like it requires some deeper work. Like I had yeah. be right before, <laughs> before last week, I had a really, really good session with my mentor and that part of me was afraid of me being visible. That was from a long, long, long time ago yeah. from childhood I mean, exactly. and had kind of just built up power, but it really, like, it felt like it had a chokehold on me. Yeah. And being able to do the deep dive and do the work with someone else that could guide me through that made all the difference because I had tried so many times before to focus on the service, to focus on the fact that I had this message inside of me that I wanted to share and I couldn't break through that on my own. But I, after that session, I had enough leverage and I felt empowered enough to be able to still walk through regardless of those saboteurs showing up. So that, you know, obviously you and I are, are coaches, but it's also like, we have our coaches as well. Like we are still, we do. we're still going through these layers and it does. Sometimes you need somebody to take your hand and like walk you through these things. And one of our teachers, uh, Kumo Patrick, he, I remember in one of the trainings, he said, Hey, we are like an onions full of layers. Yes. And you know, <laughs> you know, when we are going to reach the last layer, whenever we die, like basically never. So it's a lifelong journey of working through things as they come up because even if you release baggage right which we do breakthrough sessions that's basically an in-depth comprehensive process to release baggage even if you release baggage there are different contexts that will elicit similar baggage from similar situations when you still were a child right so yeah. I think it is a lifelong journey but one that is full of empowerment and fulfillment and challenges too because there is no dark without light and I always joke that if I ever get a tattoo I don't have a tattoo but <laughs> if I ever get a tattoo it's gonna be this quote from Thich Nhat Hanh do you know Thich Nhat Hanh mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he's an amazing uh, Buddhist monk he passed away a few years back but he has this quote that says no mud no lotus so mm. if you look at the lotus flower it always blooms from the mud it comes from down and then it blooms to the surface right so what this is saying like there is no success without challenges like the story of success is a story of overcoming challenges there is no love without also fear because if not, you wouldn't know that it's love. So it's just like all of these dualities that we have to go through in order to continue growing. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a lifelong path. And, you know, I think I see myself as a curious person. And yeah. there's this quote that's like, blessed are the curious for they will have adventures, right? Hey, and yeah. so always being curious about yourself and that next layer. And again, that mystery that's in you and you know how we're like the most advanced technology on the planet, yeah, actually. Exactly. We're just externalizing all of these things that are actually already within us. And so I, I am so grateful for the path that you and I are on and to be able to help others quantum leap in their journey, right? Right. Yeah, it is beautiful. Yeah. And uh, as we're concluding, Ina, we didn't talk about mind-body image, but I think that's mm. a topic that a lot of our listeners may resonate with. And I would say a lot of women, you know, that I've met, like they... I mean, even me, sometimes I struggle with my, the, the body, the body image, right? Like your self-worth. 
what have you learned in your path of really like harnessing that confidence in your body related to your body? Oh man, that is, I feel like we need- That is another podcast episode, episode, but just think about the key. No, I know. (laughs) You know, uh, again, that's a journey I've been on for a long time. Uh, Yo-yo dieting, really focusing on like hard workouts. And I've tried all the diets, all the things, uh, really coming into communion with your body, meaning a communication and a relationship, knowing that your body always has has your best interest at heart from the beginning it's kept yeah. you alive it's the most flexible thing in your life you know um no matter what you eat no matter what you do it's going to try to meet you halfway but your body you have this amazing power within you to heal anything your body is a mirror of your deepest beliefs about yourself and your place in the world it's a mirror of your um, emotional state and so it's giving you signs so that you can continue to grow and you can continue to stay on your path like going back to the what you were saying about saying yes when you want to say no we are probably going to start giving you little signs if you're if you're on that right so like for example if i get a pain or if I get a headache or something that's unusual for me, I'll ask myself, what have I said yes to that I want to say no to that now I'm looking for an excuse, like an out? Um, What stress am I under that I'm not acknowledging that I'm trying to just bypass and like keep going with? So there's questions that you can ask yourself that that puts you into that communication with your body. Um, In terms of image, it's really those filters in our mind. Like yeah. we could be yeah. the most beautiful, but if we have these beliefs and that we've picked up along the way, you won't see it. And one of, um, at Huna, you know, we do these like deeper meditations. And one of the first lessons that came to me, again, that really subtle voice, I even came out of the meditation. I was like, I didn't get anything out of this. <laughs> it was like a really <laughs> deep lesson. It was, um, it was, you have to see yourself the way we see you. I love and that. that was one of the first lessons that I got there and still something that I'm working on, uh, you know, really seeing myself as that once in a lifetime cosmic event, you know, the divine kind of spark. And even if you have to go back, you know, it, there's inner child work, like you could go back and see yourself as, as a kid before you took on all these beliefs, like, well, how would you see that kid? How would you see yourself as a baby? Perfect. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, there's perfection there. It's divine. And even if you have a voice, you can ask yourself, who does this sound like? When did I pick this up? When did this, yeah. when did this record start? Because oftentimes it's, it's not your voice at all. It's something that you heard and started believing. Yeah. And I reminded the other day, a client that most people don't see you as you see yourself, you know, because yeah. I'm like, sometimes you know, we are like, oh my God, I'm so ugly or I'm like, whatever. And this client was telling me that. And I'm like, the first, I, I'm reminding my, remembering the first time I ever saw her and I'm like, oh my God, she's so beautiful. So <laughs> right, like the opposite yes, yes. of whatever she was saying. So that was such a good reminder of like, we are our harshest critics. And most people mm-hmm. don't see us as we see ourselves, as we are treating yes. ourselves. So also recognizing that blind spot. I mean, loving yourself, practicing that every day, making, every day making the decision. I think it's a decision we got to wake up and make we got to wake up absolutely one really good practice and it's kind of scary but it's it's good you can make a list of five people you feel like comfortable with it could be best friends sisters cousins whatever call them and be like hey my life coach just gave me this assignment I'm just going to ask you this question then that's it like that's the conversation what's my essence what do I bring into the room when you see me like what's the first thought and and it's funny I did this exercise a couple years ago (laughs) around the same time I got that that you have to see yourself the way we see you I did this exercise and I called and I called five people and they said you know they said all these nice things and in my head I was like god they're lying like they have to say this Because I called them, of course, they're not going to tell me what they really think, you know? And then you realize, oh my God, this is like, I have a problem. (laughs) It's me, not them. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So it's a really, and I wrote, I wrote those down, like on a notepad on my phone. And oftentimes, like if I'm on a plane or something, and I'm just kind of going through my phone, I'll look at those and be like, it's just a good reminder, like you said, to see ourselves through the lens of other people without our own 
you know, perceptions and filters and limiting beliefs that we hold, but it will give you kind of a clue to where you can begin work, begin to break apart those beliefs and the emotions that you have. Yeah, I, I love it. And it's evidence of like, hey, you're beautiful, you're capable, right? So yeah. I, I love that exercise, exercise because it's an outside evidence of contradicting what we think of ourselves, which is yeah. in a it has been a pleasure being here with you, sharing so your good. wisdom. I'm just so excited that you agreed um, to do this together. And as I conclude, I always have like a rapid fire question. I ask my guests. So these are questions <laughs> I'm going to ask. And I want you to go like quickly. Just give me the answer. The first thing that comes to mind, which okay. you're really good at it. At it. So <laughs> are you ready, my friend? Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, cool. What's your favorite book? Um, um, practicing the power of now. Ooh, is that different than the Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle? Yeah, so it's like literally right here on my desk. Uh, oh, oh, so practicing. this was one of my yeah. It's it's all of the golden nuggets, and like you can see, I've I've highlighted, rehighlighted, underlined. I've read this a million times. This is one of the one of the ones I use to help raise my frequency if I'm feeling down. Beautiful, because so I read good. the power of now, but I didn't know there was a version yeah. of practicing the power of now. It's so good. Okay, now <laughs> on your book list. Added so much value to this call, but now I'm like, I'm a fan of books. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Who is your biggest role model? Oh my goodness, that is so hard. That's hard the first question. person that comes to mind. Whoever uh, that is, I'll say, oh uh, yeah, I'll say Alma, my uh, from from Huna. So she's my Aww, mentor and my coach and and one of my really really good friends. But yeah, she's definitely my role model and the way she just treats everyone with such love and respect, but also the way she holds the vision and just like doesn't give you an option other than to live into that a huge shout out to Alma here oh, she's, yeah <laughs> she's such a beautiful and nurturing soul so we really yes. love her that's awesome what's the most important piece of advice you would give to your younger self yeah don't lose touch with that knowing and always trust it that inner knowing inner voice that yeah. internal gps that is always right I yes love that. I love that that's so beautiful Ina, where can our listeners find you? Like Instagram, like tell us all yes. about it. Right now, best place Instagram, you can find me at, at Ina Mitev, I-N-N-A-M-I-T-E-V. And from there, I have links to websites and other social media. So that is the best place. Amazing. I will make sure to include a link to her Instagram so you awesome. can connect with her. Ina, I'm sure everyone benefited so much from this conversation. They are inspired to manifest, to take action. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. I love you and I admire you. So thank you. Oh, thank heart. you for this opportunity. And I hope this is one of many conversations we have because I've had so much fun just like flowing in and out. And <laughs> so anytime. I, I would love, love to come that. back and join you. Thank you so much, everyone. If you enjoyed this interview, this podcast episode, please share with family and friends so we can continue expanding the light of empowerment. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening at With Clarity and Purpose. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Sharing is caring. Please share with your friends and family so we can continue building an empowered community together. I'll see you next week.